and welcome. Today I would like to show you Stargard Saltis, a game released by the Swedish company Three Crown Games about one of the last German offensive attempts during World War II. Operation Sonnenwende, as it was called, or in English Operation Solstice, it was a German attack in the Western Pomerania at the beginning of 1945. Originally, Germans planned a pincer attack coming from the north, from Pomerania, and from the south, from Silesia, to cut off the spearhead of the Soviet forces that were attacking into the Reich in the, at the beginning of 1945. But in the same time, uh, Soviets launched their offensive at Hungary, and since Hungary was the last ally of the Germans, Hitler had no choice but to use uh, some of his forces to help uh, Hungary. So, the uh, original uh, plan of the pincer attack was uh, nullified and Germans had to attack only from the north. And this game covers this uh, German attack. Uh, originally, this game comes with one big scenario, but uh, later, in the 45 issue of the Tactics and Strategy magazine, uh, there came two additional scenarios uh, covering both uh, stages of this operation, German, uh, German offensive and then Soviet counter-offensive. And here you can see a setup for the first of these two small scenario, scenarios about German offensive. My goal is to show you how this game works. I don't think I will, pl I, I will be playing the entire scenario, but my goal is to show you in details the uh, mechanics, rules and everything else that is uh, important to play this game. This is one of the f uh, more games uh, from the World War II Battle series, and it was fourth game of this series. I believe that uh, the last game of this uh, series so far uh, tolling the bell about uh, German Spring Awakening operation was released in the middle of uh, 2022 and uh, I don't know if Stargard Solstice is still uh, in print and, and available to buy from the first hand. I think if you want uh, to get it, you have to buy from the second hand. But still, I think this is interesting game about a very interesting uh, operation, so it is uh, worth to make a video about it. So, let's start uh, talking about this game. First of all, about units. We have two kinds of uh, uh, counters when it comes to the units. We have uh, unit counters and hit hitquarter counters. As for the unit counters, we have three values. Attack value, which is the first from the left, defense value, which is a middle number, and movement value, which is the right number. As for the movement, there are two, two types of movement. Uh, mechanized movement, which is a yellow number, or normal movement, which is a black or white number. White number on the black counters only. On, the, on all the others, it is black. As for the headquarters, we have only two values. It is a movement value and on the right and range on the left, which tells us on how many hexes our, uh, our headquarter has its uh, command range. So that's for the counters and now Let's go for the others. Next important thing is that uh, most of the units belong to the certain armies or corps. Uh, to check it, you have to check the color of icon or this uh, yellow marking here. So, for example, this uh, unit and that unit are all parts of the, sing of the same group because of the same color. This unit, that unit, and this unit are all parts of the same group because of the same color. So, for example, these old units are the <coughs> parts of the third SS Panzer Corps because it has a red stripe, they have a red stripe, and they have a red icon. Uh, some uh, units have no markings of the corps or army. They are called independent units. There, is, uh, v there are very few of them but uh, sometimes uh, they might uh, appear on the game in the game for example here you can see this 11 guard uh, tank uh, re regiment you can see they have uh, th there is no no stripe 
below the numbers, so this is independent unit. And uh, independent units can be commanded by any hit quarter. And next, this game is a, is a random activation uh, game. In each activation uh, uh, turn, uh, you put all your activation markers into the cup, you shuffle, and you draw a, a hit quarter uh, counter. Then you activate this uh, hit quarter and it can activate all its units. These units are moving, attacking, and then uh, you put this counter aside and next you can draw another counter and so on till all the, other, all the counters are out. A very important note is that you cannot activate the same unit twice in the row. You can activate uh, this uh, same group twice in the turn, but not twice in the row. For example, let's say that I, I just activated this T39 uh, Panzer Corps and then I get um, where it is. Oh, here it is. And then I get this counter, which allows me to activate any German unit. I can activate any other German unit now, but I cannot activate this unit again because it would be second activation in the row. Also, let's assume again that I just activated this unit. Then I, do, I get this Soviet group. I activated this Soviet group and then I, active, I get this uh, German uh, headquarter that allows me to activate any other German unit. Still, I cannot activate this unit again because it would be, uh, it would count as the second activation in the row. I have to activate any other German unit and then I can activate this unit again if I would be allowed by any other kind of special activation counter. So this is something what to remember. Uh, this, uh, this is how it works normally. The first uh, turn of the game is uh, quite different. It works a bit differently. It is kind of programmed uh, to show uh, players how this offensive started. So uh, one, uh, some more things. There are also AO units in the game. Each player has a couple of them uh, and uh, they have both sides. There is one and two side. These uh, AO units are used to provide support in the combat and uh, you can use them uh, to get one column shift or two column shift. If you get them to use, uh, if, sorry, if you will use them to get one column shift, you place them in the refit box and if you use them to get two column shift you place them in the grounded box this is pretty important because uh, uh, the box uh, they are in counts uh, for the time uh, they are going to be back in the game so you will see how it works uh, very soon at the beginning of the game a german player has two units uh, in his grounded box and two units in his ready box Soviet player has one unit, one AO unit in his ready box. Also, these AO units can be used in attack only. So if you are defending, you cannot use your uh, AO unit. So that's all for the basics of the basics. I think that most of the stuff is going to be explained during the gameplay. So first of all, this scenario tells that first unit which is going to be activated is this third SS Panzer Corps. So all these red units here are about to be activated with, it, with their headquarter. But uh, that's, not, uh, that's not something uh, that we are going to start, start with because uh, we have to check the number of the phases. First, here we have a player 8 with a sequence of play and first of all we have AO units phase. First, Refit unit return segment, grounded unit refit segment. So all the units that are in the refit box uh, can be moved to the uh, ready box. We don't have any AO units in the refit box. Next, all the grounded unit, uh, unit refitting segment. All the units that are in the grounded box are moved to the refit box. So German player has two units in his uh, grounded box, so they are moved to the refit box. 
Next, we have random event phase. In this phase, we have to check what kind of random event happened during this turn. So, we have to make a first roll in this game. Well, there are counters everywhere, so let's place it here. And I have to make a roll to see what kind of random event is going to happen. This is six. This means air operation aborted. Okay, and let me show you how it works. Here we have a random event table. Here we have a number of the turn, we have turn one. Here are the results of the die roll and possible events. You can see that if we get one to three, it would be German barrage, four, five, German surprise, six, air operation aborted. Sometimes we have a two events primary event and secondary event. If uh, any of these primary event happens before and you roll for them, uh, then you, you have to use secondary event. But we rolled for air operation aborted, 6. Both players must ground one AO unit, firstly the one from the air box, or none, or if none are av available, from the refit side of the grounded box. So, German player has two units in his uh, ready box. So he has to ground uh, one of them. And uh, Soviet player has one unit in his ready box, so he also has to move them, move it into the grounded box. No, oh, this is not going to work fine. Okay, that's all for the event phase. And next we have a command phase. So, uh, we have to check uh, uh, for uh, for the first activation. And like I said before, normally we have to draw, but in the first turn rules are a bit different. A Soviet player has only one activation possible uh, allowed, uh, while a German player uh, has more, but there are some special rules that allow Soviet player to activate more units. Uh, first of all, a German player is starting with third uh, Panzer Corps of SS, and uh, till the end of this turn, if any Soviet group will be attacked by Germans, then a Soviet, Soviet player gains an activation counter of this group. So, this is pretty important for German player to, do, to check how many of Soviet units he, plays, he plans to attack, because uh, any group he will attack will get its activation in this turn. So. Uh, Another special rule for this, for this first turn is that all the units of the group can be activated. It is not uh, uh, going to happen in all the other turns. Why? Because uh, when you uh, draw your marker, you have to check if any of your units are uh, in the range of its uh, hit quarter. For example, this uh, Hit quarter has range of 10, so we have to check if all the units uh, of this corpse are in the range of this, of, of this uh, uh, counter. They are. But like I said before, in the, in the turn 1 we don't have to check. Normally we would have to, and if any of these units would be out of, the, out of the range, it have to be marked with out of supply counter. But we don't have to care about it now, so we can simply activate all the red German units. Now, about movement. First of all, we have a stacking uh, limit of two. We can only stack two units on the single hex and the, and the hit quarter. We can, also, we can always stack a hit quarter along with the, these two units. Next, we can move, but entering enemy zone of control always costs you two movement points, yes, and leaving enemy zone of control also costs you two movement points. So uh, this can be uh, quite, pro quite problematic to enter enemy zones of control because uh, you have to spend uh, two movement points to do it. And of course uh, it, it goes around with uh, terrain cost. So let's go and uh, check which of the German units I can uh, activate. Of course, all these red units, but also I can activate independent units, like for example, this Kampfgruppe or that Kampfgruppe. 
Oh, and sorry, one more thing about um, zones of control I have to may say. Units with uh, combat with attack value of zero, zero have no zone of control. And if there is a stack, always a unit which is, at, which is on the top of the stack counts. So for example, here we have a stack of Soviet unit with attack value of four and Soviet uh, unit, uh, win, unit with an uh, attack value of zero. I place them here in purpose so you can see how it works. So this stack has no zone of control. There is also a special kind of movement called strategic movement. You can make strategic movement only when you are on the road, track, roll ban or railway. Uh, this kind of movement allows you to move faster. For example, you can see that uh, if you are moving down the track, you have to spend a half movement point moving uh, down this uh, hex. And when you are using strategic movement, you have to spend a one of third of the movement point. But there are certain limitations with uh, strategic movement. First of all, you cannot start your strategic movement in the enemy zone of control, and you cannot end your strategic movement in the enemy zone of control. So you cannot move through the enemy zones of control when you go with strategic movement. And what is uh, mo more important, if you are a German player and you use uh, strategic, strategic movement, even for a single uh, unit, then you lose one activation in the next turn. This, uh, this is because of the German fuel limitations. The German uh, suffered a serious problem with, the, with, with, with their fuel attempts, uh, with, with their uh, fuel reserves uh, at the end of the war, and this rule uh, covers this basic fact. Okay, so I think this is finally everything I should tell, tell you about uh, movement. Uh, let's go and move. As for victory conditions, I don't think this is very important to speak about it now because I'm not playing the entire scenario. Uh, so let's just play to show you how this game works. Okay, I will start with this group and here we have a river. So let's check it out. For the minor river, we have to spend one additional movement point to move. Uh, notice this fact that uh, there is no different uh, column for uh, me mechanized or motorized and no, uh, me mechanized and not non-mechanized units, but some uh, of the terrain is not allowed for mecha mechanized units. For example, you cannot enter. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, you have to spend uh, more movement points when you enter woods, and you uh, you cannot enter swamp with your mechanized units. So, for example, I cannot move here, there, because there is a swamp on the way. So, I will start with this group. They are spending one half movement point, uh, half movement, uh, sorry, half movement points to enter here. So it is half and two and half because they are entering enemy zone of control, and which is pretty important and I think quite unique. They don't have to stop when and when they enter enemy zone of control. They still can move if they have enough movement points. And they have, because they spent two and a half movement points to enter this hex. And now they enter this hex, they, they get uh, another two and a half. So now they spent five movement points. So that's all. They can, they, can, they can, for example, move here, but they cannot go here. So this unit moves, uh, moves uh, in the same way. And now they. They spent one movement point to move through the minor river to and three. Now them a half, one, a half, and uh, here we have a river. And here I have to spend two additional movement points because this uh, uh, because this is a mi uh, minor river and minor river is not blocking uh, enemy zone of control. So I will move here and there and this is where I'm going to stop. Next, this unit is in my uh, range so I can activate it as well. But the question is if I want to activate it. I don't think so. 
so let it stay where it is and now this group one two three four four and I cannot enter this hex yeah because it would be two and half I would need two and half to enter this hex and I cannot so I will go here next this unit one two three four and six because of the enemy zone of control they go here now this one two three four five and plus two it's seven so it can move right here next this one one two three four five and five and half okay the others one sorry one two now who's next one two three four one two and I think that's all I will move this headquarter here so it will has all its units in its uh, 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 in its range so I think that's all oh did I move this unit or not um, I'm not sure let me check no I didn't I still can move them so uh, where I'm going to move it I think one two three four five six all right so that this is the entire activation of this german group there is one more thing i can do with these two units here they are all, also red so i can move them as well so they are going to move here and they are going to move here okay so that's all now let's go and resolve our attacks first i'm going to attack here i have four against five so it is one to two not a very good result what can i do i think i will use my air force uh, unit to get plus two column shift so now it was one to two and one two it is two to one now uh, German Soviets are defending in the village. If village has any combat influence, let me check. Uh, it negates first retreat result. So if the Soviets will have to retreat, they can uh, retreat. Uh, they can uh, negate their first retreat result. So let's make a roll. It is two to one, and six. Mm, very good, I believe. Two D one. So. Uh, a number says uh, how many steps defender losses so this uh, defender uh, this uh, soviet unit is eliminated okay and this uh, uh, unit is moved to the grounded box because uh, it was used in its with its two uh, value Okay, and let's go to the uh, other German attacks. Now here, we have four against four. It is one to one. Four. Uh, Soviets are in the uh, in the village, so it is one to one and four. This is A R D one. So attacker retreats. Defender suffers one step loss. So we have to retreat one hex and Soviets suffer one step loss. Next combat is here. Four, four and three. This is 11 against four. So it is two to one. They are in the clear terrain. So this is two to one. And the roll is six. Mm, pretty good. 
it is d1 so defender is uh, suffers one step loss as you can see it goes quite smoothly next here seven and four is eleven and now here we have two uh, but uh, they are uh, attacking through the minor river so their strength is halved so they have not two but one so it is 12 against 3, so it is 4 to 1. Let's make a roll. 6, hmm, another good roll. Looks like Dai is liking us. It was 4 to 1 and uh, D and 6, it is D1, R2. What it means? D1 is one step loss for uh, Soviets and R2 is retreat to hexes. So they have to retreat to hexes one sorry one two and now we can perform a pursuit we can perform a pursuit by one hex with our non-mechanized non units and two hexes with our mechanized units so one two one two and one this is how i'm going to make a pursuit and uh, now uh, there is one one important thing i have to cover now First, before I will undergo with my more attack with my last attacks, first I attacked attacked uh, this unit uh, and uh, that unit, this unit, and that unit. All of them are the parts of the uh, Soviet 61 army. So this army is going to be activate again, activated next. Uh, so I have to remember about it. I place this marker to remember about uh, that this army is going to be activate next. And now here, my last attack is going to be ag against this uh, Soviet unit. So I have four, six. They have uh, they have only one because they are attacking to the minor river. So it's four, six, seven. 7 plus 4 is 11 and 11 plus 1 is 12. So it's 12 against 4, so it's 3 to 1 and 5. Pretty good again. 5 and 3 to 1 is d1. So defender suffers one step loss. That's all. Uh, that's all we don't have any other combats to resolve this means that this uh, activation ends and now like i said before this soviet 61st army can be activated next because of the special rule of this particular turn so we can we can now activate all these units marked with yellow uh, and again since it's first turn we don't have to care about this uh, range so i can activate all my yellow units what can i do hmm. uh, i think they might be a, in, in a problem here because uh, these german units are pretty strong oh and uh, this is uh, independent unit so i can activate it for free so i think i will move it here they are in the enemy zones of control, so they cannot uh, move. They are going to withdraw here, and I will unstrength them with this unit. They can stay here, I think. And any other of my... Uh, I have only some units here as well, so I will move them closer. One, sorry, one, two, three, and no i cannot move here because it would cost me two additional movement points to enter enemy zone of control so i can only move here and this unit can move here so i think that's all for the soviet yellow units oh i have a engineer unit here as well so one two three four okay that's all i don't have any other units to move so now i can resolve my attacks if i want to attack anywhere of course because attacks here are not obligatory you don't have to attack you can attack but you don't have to so i will launch my attack here i have four against two so it's two to one 
3. 3 in the 2 to 1 is AR D1. So attacker retreats, defender suffers one step loss. So they have to retreat and these Germans suffer one step loss. And anywhere else? Hmm. Attacking here would be quite risky. I have three, they have two, so it would be one to one. But if I will succeed, I might uh, cause some troubles to the German Supli here, so I will try. This is one to one. Okay, a good roll. One to one and five. DR, defender retreats. So they have to retreat one hex. And because of that, I can enter this hex. This is good. So, that's all for the activation of this army, and now I can uh, put it out of the game, and now I can uh, draw uh, one more activation marker. This is German uh, 39 Panzer Corps. So, this is, uh, so all the blue units now are about to be activated. Okay, so we go with all blue units. I don't have to check if they are in, in range of command because it is first turn. You can see that a lot of them is uh, on the road uh, and uh, on the railroad. So I would be able uh, to use strategic movement, but again, there is a special rule saying that you cannot use strategic movement in the turn one. So let us go and do our movement. So they are going, he's going to move here, one, two, and he's going to support this attack. They are going to join them, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's all for this flank. Now here we have uh, two big groups. So. Let's go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that should be all here and now there. One, two, one, two, three, uh, five, five and a half. Okay, and they are going to to attack here. So that's here, uh, that's everything uh, where I would like to attack. Now let's regroup our remaining units. One, two, three, four, and I cannot enter this hex because it would be one for clear terrain and two for enemy zone of control. So they are going to join, join them. Next, them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, three and a half. And they are moving simply here. They are moving here. They are moving here and they one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight and one two three four okay so I think that's all oh no I have all, all this uh, <clears throat> this more units uh, here to move one two three four and they just go here and these uh, remaining units I'm not even going to move them <coughs> I don't have to so uh, let's resolve uh, German attacks first here two three and five five against two is two to one I'm not going to use my air units because I I, I already use them so I don't have any and it's three three in the two to one is a one the air this means that uh, sorry AR D1. <laughs> so attacker retreats, uh, defenders suffers one step loss. So this unit is eliminated and uh, attacker has to retreat one hex. Okay, who's next? Here. Two, five, nine, and twelve. We have twelve against two, so it's six to one. And now let's make a roll. It is four in the six to one. It is D1 R2. So defender suffers one step loss and has to retreat two hexes. So this is infantry unit. So, and they are in the village. So they can uh, ignore the first uh, retreat and beca but because it was retreat two hexes, they still have to retreat one hex. So they are going to retreat here. Germans are advancing onto this hex. Now, who was about to attack uh, they? They have six against 14. So it is, yeah, th uh, this is one to three. And when the result is lower than one to three, so for example, it is one to two and uh, there would be one to three. So uh, the, the attack is not even resolved. They are simply not attacking at all. So that's all the German attacks in this uh, activation. So let's remove uh, this activation marker. Where did I put? Here it is. So this group is not is out of play. And now, since my Soviets attacked, uh, sorry, my Germans attacked uh, units of this uh, Soviet second uh, tank army, I have to take counter of the second tank army and now this army is activated because of the first uh, uh, first turn special rules so now we go with this soviet army market with green okay so what i'm going to do hmm. i have a lot of them so i have make a good use of them somewhere Okay, I will move my tanks here to save these dudes. They are going to attack here. These tanks are going to... One, two, three. These, ta <clears throat> these tanks. One, two, three. One, two, three, no, sorry, <clears throat> three, four, five, yeah. And now they are going to cover. Oh, sorry, they cannot. They are brown. They are green. They are green, all right. So I cannot move them. <laughs> this tank unit is going to go here to cover this area and now this part of the front well my uh, tanks are, are about to attack here okay that's all for the uh, Soviets well I will move these combat engineers onto this hex and like that so that's all for the Soviet movement. Let's go to the Soviet combat. Where Soviets are going to attack? Here. They have 14 against 5. So it is 2 to 1. 
Soviets have no air units, so it is simply 2 to 1 and 2. Uh, 2 to 1 and 2 is A1 the air. This means that attacker suffers one step loss and the defender has to retreat. So, 1 and now can they retreat? Yes, they can onto this hex and Soviets are moving here. Okay, who, who's next? They. 14 against 5. So it is 2 to 1 again and 6. 6 in the 2 to 1 is d1. Defender suffers one step loss. They are going to attack next. They have 10 against 2. It is 5 to 1. Oh, 5 to 1 and 1 is the air. Defender retreats and they are in the village, so they can ignore the first retreat result. Now here, 5 against 2, it's 2 to 1, and 5, 5 in the 2 to 1 is dr2. Defender retreats 2 hexes, and they are in the village, so they can ignore the first retreat, so they have to ignore retreat one, one hex anyway. And next, I'm not going to attack here, I think these Germans are pretty strong, I, I will need more units. And now here, 4 against 1, it is 4 to 1, they are in the village. Oh, good, 6 in the 4 to 1 is D1 R2, because of the village it is R1 instead. So they have to suffer one step loss and they are done. So Soviets are allowed to check take this village. All right, so that's all for the Soviet activation of the second uh, guards uh, army and we can get this counter of the game. So let's uh, <coughs> draw one more uh, activation marker and who's going to be next? This is Münzel. Uh, Münzel units are all brown so let's check where they are. Well some of them are here and I think, oh, some of them are here as well. So you can see <coughs> they are scattered, scattered all over the board. Uh, it is good that we don't have to care about it in the turn one, because uh, if it would be turn two, some of them would be surely out of range of their hit quarter. So let's go and move them. Okay, where where are they going to go? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I will go like this. <clears throat> the other units, I think. Ah, uh, oh, there's pretty important thing. Uh, especially when you are playing a uh, two-player's game, but only also if you play one-player game. Uh, normal in this game, you cannot check the stacks. This is uh, kind of a fog of war rule that tells you that uh, if uh, there are two enemy units in the stack, you cannot, uh, you cannot do the thing I just did. So you cannot take uh, the, uh, the f uh, first unit and check for the other unit's strength. So I think this is pretty nice rule and I recommend you to use it. So I don't know, I, I, should, I shouldn't do it, so I, I, I'm not sure what, which unit is below this Soviet weakened unit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three. Okay, and this guns will go here, this infantry, sorry, cavalry, this is cavalry unit, moves here. And our headquarters is here, so I would like uh, to know if I, if some of the other units that are part of this Mincel group should be moved as well, like all the remaining units here. Uh, in this turn I can move them normally, but in all the other turns I will have to check for their uh, range. So I think that I'm, I will move some of the um, some of my units there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I think I might need some of my units to protect this flag. So one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I think that's all for Münzel. And now let's check for their attack combat. I'm going to attack here. I have six against four, so it is one to one. Five in the one to one is the air defender retreats. So they they have to retreat and I can go on. Now here I have five against five. It is one to one. Oh A1. Attacker suffers one step loss. And I think that's all for the Mincel. We don't have to attack anywhere else. And now all the uh, German attacks were against the units of the second guard army, which was already activated. So I don't have to take uh, this uh, army's activation marker. So, and I can simply take this marker out of game and draw for another marker. And <clears throat> this is going to be Stell 2 Corps. This is a small uh, number of weak uh, units that are here in the western part of the board. You can see they are all white, so there isn't uh, much stuff to do with them actually because they are mostly protecting the Stettin area. So uh, they, they are, you can see they are mostly pretty weak. So uh, there is not a, much use of them, but I will try to do something. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, sorry, no, they were here. So one, two, one, they are going to cover this area and like that. And now do I have anything else to do with these white units? I don't think I don't have I have much to do with them. Maybe this uh, unit will move here. And <clears throat> that's all. I have only one attack to resolve. <clears throat> I have four, five and seven against three. So it's two to one. They are defending in the village. So it's two to one and ooh, two, it is A1, the air. So attacker suffers one step loss, defender has to retreat. So uh, this unit is going to suffer one step loss and the defender is in a village. So they don't have, to, they, they can ignore first retreat result. So that's all for the Stelz group. And we have one more counter in the cup. This is a Soviet Konstantinov group. This is white group. Oh, and <laughs> all the Soviet Konstantinov group are these four units, this headquarter and these three cavalry units. So again, not much stuff to do with these Konstantinov guys. And uh, the question is, what are they going to do? Hmm. They are pretty strong units, actually. You can see they are five, three, so they are quite good in attack and uh, I will place one of them here to protect this area. The other one will stay here to protect this uh, part of the front. Uh, they are coming so they will cover this flank. And I have this one unit. Uh, but I can see any good situation where they could be used to attack anyone, I, I think. So let them move here. And that would be everything. So this uh, concludes uh, Konstantinov activation and this, con uh, this concludes 
uh, command phase as well because uh, we uh, we just made activated and spent all the units in the activation cup so that's all for our actions uh, also about the movement you might notice that uh, almost uh, i think all of my units moved uh, with a half of movement hex uh, uh, when they are moved down the roads roll bands or trucks so you may you may ask what is the difference between this uh, and uh, to tell you the difference i have to check check the uh, terrain effect chart and you can see this is a strategic movement column it is one and half movement when you move with the strategic movement down the roll bun, one and four when you are moving down the road, one and three when you are moving down the track, and one and three when you are moving down the railway. So this is where the difference uh, are, uh, are. When you uh, go with the normal movement, there is no difference, uh, uh, but uh, as you can see, um, mechanized units have definitely more movement points that leg units okay so now we have to, to check the supply because we have a supply phase now and now uh, units must have to trace the uh, supply line and uh, the supply line must be free uh, of the enemy units and enemy zones of control and uh, it can go down the clear terrain roll bun road truck railway or friendly units so we have to check if our if any of our units are out of supply now. I think that some of them actually are. Let me check for out of supply markers because I might need them. And let's go from the west. Okay, this Soviet unit is definitely out of supply because here and there are enemy zones of control. This German group is definitely out of supply as well, because all around are enemy zones of control. Now, here are all fine. And now the same goes to this Soviet group. They are out of supply. And anyone else is out of supply? I might, I, I think that some of them are, but I will need more counters. Uh, they are all fine, I believe. Mm -hmm. And now here. This Soviet unit is out of supply. And this German group is out of supply. And I think that's all. All the remaining units are in supply because you can you can tell that Soviets have their supply coming from the... Uh, east and north while germans have their supply coming from the sorry from the uh, east and south and the germans have their supply coming from the north and west okay so that's all for the supply stuff yeah that's all and now maybe a few words about the effects of the auto supply if uh, units are out of supply, they have their attack and defense strength halved, uh, their movement uh, allowance is the same, and if hit quarter is marked with out of supply, it is removed uh, from the board and is going to be relocated. Uh, if a unit is out of supply at the beginning of the, uh, sorry, if unit is marked with out of supply marker, marker at the beginning of the supply phase, and it is again out of supply, this marker is flipped on the isolated side. If a unit which is isolated has its strength, defense and movement allowance halved, and, uh, uh, and if, uh, sorry, uh, if uh, hit quarter becomes uh, isolated, all, the, uh, all its units are marked as isolated as well. And also, mechanized units can only one, uh, advance one hex after if they are out of supply or is isolated. So I think that's all when it comes to the supply phase. And now, uh, do we have any stuff more? No. Next we have reinforcement phase. 
And now we have uh, one more phase to go, it is reinforcement phase. In the reinforcement phase uh, we go with reinforcement segment, so we have to check if we get any additional markers uh, in this uh, turn. So let's check for the Operation Solstice uh, part and now uh, we have Soviet reinforcements. It is. It says 47 army draw cheat. So we take a 47 army draw cheat and we add it to the total number of the uh, markers we, were, we are going to use in the next turn. Next uh, we have uh, Soviet reinforcements. These two units are going to enter the game from the D zone. So we have to take them, these two units, and they are entering from the D zone, which is here. And now they can move normally. They can even use strategic movement if you want to, but like I said, you cannot use strategic movement in the turn one. So one, they are yellow. So we want to move them there, so they will be in the range of their army group. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, that's all, because they cannot enter enemy zone of control. And this unit is brown, and its headquarter is here. Well, I don't think it will be possible to even move it in the range of their headquarters, so instead I will move it here, so it will form some kind of defense group. Okay, that's all for the Soviet uh, reinforcements. And the last step of the reinforcement phase is Volksturm deployed segment. And now... If uh, German uh, lost any Volksturm units during this, uh, uh, this turn, uh, they are placed in, in the, um, the Volksturm box. So here we have one Volksturm unit which, which was destroyed in this phase. And now we can place it anywhere on board in the Germans, uh, German city or town. Uh, and where I'm going to use it? Do I have any places where, I'm, where, where, where I need? some kind of defense. <laughs> I think I might place it just right here. And that's all. This concludes reinforcement phase and next we have end of turn phase where we have to advance our marker and go into the next turn. So it would be turn two, but I think that's all for this video. My goal was not to play the entire game, but to show you how this game works. So I think now you have a general idea of this game. Of course, there are maybe some rules that I ha ha that that were uh, uh, that uh, that I uh, hadn't a chance to cover, but I think most of them were actually covered here. So now, uh, oh sorry, they are marked as isolated, but they should be out of supply, of course. But I think uh, that uh, I think 80 or 90 percent of the rules were already covered in this video. So if you have this game and you haven't a chance to play it, I think this video might help you to get into the game. Or if you are interested in this uh, part of the World War II, you might like to get this game. But I think as for now, it would be easier to get it from the second hand or wait for the possible reprint. I think that a publisher might <coughs> reprint this game sooner or later. I don't know actually, but I hope they are, because you can see this is a pretty good game, uh, quite easy and fun to play about a rather obscure operation. So thank you for watching and see you next time.